Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Rubber, released in the year 2010. At the beginning of the movie, an accountant is seen standing in the middle of a desert, holding a bunch of binoculars. Several chairs are placed on a pathway nearby. Deputy Pete drives a car through the pathway, serving to deliberately knock out all the chairs on the way. When he stops, Lieutenant Chad comes out of the car's trunk and asks for a glass of water from Pete. He then walks towards the camera and explains that many things in cinema happen for no reason. Like the characters falling in love in the movie Love Story and the alien being brown in the movie E.T. All great movies contain an important element of no reason. After explaining that most things in life happen for no apparent reason, he asks the viewers to keep that in mind while watching the movie, as it is an homage to no reason. At last, he pours the water to the ground, depicting that he is doing it for no reason as well. As the camera pans backward, we see that he had been talking to a group of people. Following that, the accountant gives them one pair of binoculars each, and asks them to look into the distance to watch the movie. The audience doesn't question why they need the device to watch the film and do as they are told. When everyone is settled, the accountant leaves them to enjoy themselves and walks away. For the first few seconds, they do not see anything. A little kid starts to complain that it is boring, but his father asks him to watch a little longer. On looking closely, they see a dumping ground. All of a sudden, a tire named Robert comes to life. He gets up from the sand and starts moving on his own. He takes a few minutes to get used to balancing himself, then goes around rolling through the desert. The first thing Robert comes across is a plastic water bottle on the ground. He rolls over the bottle, crushing it. Following that, he finds a wild scorpion and does the same to the creature. Next, he notices a beer bottle and tries to crush it too, but it is unsuccessful. When his strength doesn't work, he uses his psychokinetic powers to burst the bottle. The audience is impressed and finally interested in the movie. One guy starts filming the tire, but a woman tells him it is illegal. He simply thanks her and continues watching like the rest of them. Meanwhile, Robert the Tire rolls through the desert, crushing several inanimate objects with his supernatural power. He does this for the rest of the day and falls asleep when it gets dark. The next morning, the accountant comes to wake up the audience for the second day of watching the movie. They haven't eaten since yesterday and are starving, but they are interested in the movie more than food. They continue watching the Tire which is now drinking from a puddle. He locks eyes with a rabbit and decides to use his powers on him. The innocent creature bursts, spreading its guts all over. Robert is delighted to see his power works on animals. He goes on a killing spree, looking for more animals to explode. On his way, he sees a beautiful girl drive by and uses his power on her. However, he only succeeds in making her car stall before getting run over by a truck. Robert picks himself up and goes looking for the man who hit him. The guy is at a gas station when he sees Robert. Not knowing that the tire is there to take revenge, he just stares at him. Robert starts to shake violently and uses his power to blow up the man's head. The audience gasps in shock, but gets more interested in the movie. Following the kill, Robert rolls to a motel nearby. The girl he was about to kill earlier is also staying there. He spies on her through the door and watches her shower. The men in the audience also see her and start to talk about her body. The father in the group takes the binoculars away from his son, not wanting him to look at a naked girl. The tire looks at the girl for a long time, but he doesn't kill her. It is almost as if he is attracted to her. When she goes to bed, he also goes to a room in the motel to stay the night. The object watches different shows on TV while falling asleep. The audience sees this and goes to sleep as well. Somewhere else, the accountant is also in a room in the same motel, preparing for the next day. He has a turkey that he slaughters to feed to the audience. The following morning, he gets out of the room and meets the cleaning lady, Martina. She enters his room to clean it after he leaves. The accountant wakes the audience up and throws the turkey to the ground. The starving group doesn't wait to snatch pieces of meat and devour them. The only person who doesn't feed on it is a wheelchair-using audience member. Back in the motel, Martina enters the room that Robert is staying in and sees that the bedsheet has black stains. She walks into the bathroom to witness the tire showering. Not knowing that he is alive, she believes that a customer has left a random tire in the bath. 
She throws it out, making him furious. Robert slowly enters the room to kill her as well. The son of the motel's owner, Zack, sees the tire going in and tells his father. However, the owner thinks his kid is bluffing. He scolds Zack and sends him away to get pizza. Meanwhile, Robert is watching the TV after killing Martina brutally. Following that, he rolls to the swimming pool and sees the same girl coming out of it. When she leaves, he jumps into the pool to swim. The audience sees him jump and starts debating if a tire sinks or floats in water. The son gets a sharp pain in his stomach, which makes his father worried. Soon, everyone starts to get sick. The person in the wheelchair mentions that the turkey might have been poisoned because he is the only one who is fine. On returning, Zack notices Martina's headless body and immediately calls the police. Lieutenant Chad and his team arrive soon to investigate the brutal murder. Zack insists that the tire killed Martina, but his father dismisses his concerns. He is asked to bring the tire out of the pool and throw it away. When Robert doesn't move, Zack believes that he might have drowned in the pool. Having enough of the nonsense, his father throws the tire to the ground. As the lieutenant is asking him questions about Martina, his watch rings, indicating that the audience has died. This means that they can stop the film and go home. He tells the owner that the audience is dead, but the man doesn't appear to understand anything. A glimpse from the desert shows us the dead bodies of the audience lying all around. The lieutenant then returns to his team and asks them to go home as well. When they look at him like he is insane, he explains that they were just acting for a group of people watching them from the desert. He tells them their badges are fake and nobody died in the motel. Deputy Dennis shows him Martina's body and claims that someone has definitely died, so they should do their job, but the lieutenant remains adamant in his declaration. Just as they start to believe he has lost his mind, the lieutenant asks to be shot. Without thinking much about it, one of the policemen shoots him and is surprised when the bullet does no harm. Right then, the accountant informs the lieutenant about the person in the wheelchair still being alive. Until he is dead like the rest, they will have to continue the acting. The lieutenant looks at his team and claims that everything he said was just a joke. They laugh it off and continue investigating. As he questions the owner, the tire comes to life again and explodes the owner's head using his power. The lieutenant is left speechless. He tells his team that the killer is a tire and they believe him without question. They leave to look for Robert after getting informed by Zack that he ran away. In the meantime, the accountant approaches the only living man with a table full of delicious food. He has poisoned them to kill him. The man simply refuses to eat and continues watching the film through the binoculars. A car with Deputy Xavier and Deputy Pete catches up to Robert, but the two are too scared to approach him. Robert sees them and kills Pete with his powers. Deputy Xavier is left shocked and he lets the tire get away yet again. The accountant sits beside the only audience and tells him a story from his childhood about how he killed his little brother. While he is at it, he unknowingly eats the food on the table and gets a sharp stomach ache. Eventually, he dies because of the food he had poisoned. The man watches him struggle but does nothing. Somewhere else, Robert reaches a place where a man is burning several tires. He watches the suffering of his kind but does nothing to help them. Three days later, Robert has created chaos. Headless dead bodies lie all around the town. He has killed almost half the population, but the police have still not found him. One day, he is watching TV beside a dead body when two police officers find him. They are too scared to approach him, so they call the lieutenant for help. The policemen make an elaborate plan to kill the tire without putting anyone's life in danger. They dress up a mannequin and fit it with dynamite and a microphone. Their goal is to make it look like a human so the tire would blast its head and create an explosion that would kill him. The plan works and their mannequin catches Robert's attention. However, no matter what they say through the microphone, he doesn't harm her. They try seducing him to encourage him to kill her, but it doesn't work either. By this time, the surviving audience has approached them to get a closer view of the movie. He suggests the police kill the tire up front now that they know where he is. The lieutenant asks him to let them do their jobs. Following that, the man sits nearby watching the scene. Eventually, the tire blasts the mannequin's head, but the explosive doesn't go off. 
Having had enough of it, the lieutenant walks inside the house and kills Robert with a shotgun off screen. The only audience criticizes him for the anticlimax. Only some seconds later, Robert comes out of the house reincarnated as a tricycle. The man tells the police they aren't done yet, but they have already driven away. The man begs the tricycle to not kill him, but he does it anyway. After the last audience dies, Robert is free to do whatever he pleases. He walks down the road gathering an army of tires behind him, possibly aiming for world domination. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.